So that was the incidence rate, which is basically the um, the measure of magnitude of disease, right? But um, because core study design is um, analytic study design, you can also calculate the um, um, the strength of relationship between exposure and disease using what's called relative risk or risk ratio. So with this quantity, you can compare the risk of a health event between two groups at risk. Um, so relative risk is defined as the ratio of the probability. Okay, this is actually probability, not just the ratio of having a particular disease when exposed to the probability of having the disease when not exposed. And this RR um, is used for cohort study or clinical trials um, as opposed to the case control study. Remember, the case control study uses odds ratio, which is not probability. So each odds um, is not probability because you do not know the, uh, the true denominator, which should be the population from which the cases uh, arose. But in cohort study or clinical trials, the population is actually defined um, from which cases uh, are arising, right? So you, we, we know the, um, the true denominator and the size of the population from the outset. That's why we know the probability, the true incidence. I think I uh, missed explaining why um, you cannot um, measure the true incidence in the case control study. So that is the reason why um, you cannot calculate the, um, the true incidence of a disease using case control study because you do not know the size of the population uh, where the, um, the cases are obtained. So let's just uh, take a look at how to calculate the uh, RR. So basically we're gonna use the same two by two contingency table. So um, column wise, we have um, disease status, right? Disease, no disease. And row wise, we have exposure status. And the A represents the number of cases in the exposed group. And B represents um, number of healthy um, people who are exposed to the same risk factor. <clears throat> and in this case, we know the total, total number of um, cases uh, in the exposed group. And the C represents number of cases in the unexposed group. And then T is the healthy comparison in the unexposed group. And you can calculate the total in this case. Right. Um, and if you add um, this way, then the A plus C represents the total number of cases, um, regardless of the exposure. And B plus D represents total number of healthy um, people, regardless of the exposure. Um, so basically, the risk ratio, the risk um, of the exposed group is in the uh, numerator, right? A, the number of cases in the exposed group over the total number of exposed people. But that is the uh, probability that you are uh, being a case uh, when exposed over uh, this is the um, the probability that you are getting disease, getting the same disease when not exposed, right? It's a P probability that you're getting disease given the exposure and over the probability that you will catch the disease given um, not exposed. But that is the definition of the relative risk or risk ratio. So let's work with um, the actual numbers. Um, so uh, it's just simple, right? Um, but you have to calculate the total, um, unlike the odds ratio. So that's 300, that's 40. So um, RR 
is 100 over 300 and 10 over 40 right so just so 1 over 3 over 1 over 4 so that's 4 over 3 so what is that that's like uh, one point three 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 and stuff right that is the relative risk um of catching disease when exposed you know whatever the exposure is and then you know the disease and exposure is not specified here but um that is just how to calculate the relative risk and because the relative risk is close to one and even though it is greater than one you do not know if this risk ratio is um, statistically greater than one and you know that uh, you know what to do with that right to statistically test if this risk ratio is um, greater than one in terms of statistics so we have same steps as in odds ratio so you calculate the rr uh, from the contingency table then you take the natural log of the rr and they calculate the standard error of um, the log natural log the rr and then calculate the lower upper limit of 95 percent confidence interval in log space and then you exponentiate them to get um the numbers in the in the original scale and the equation is a little different to calculate the uh, standard error of the uh, natural log of rr but uh, you can just plug in the numbers um, in this equation to find the standard error um, and everything else is the same so let's just uh, take a look at um, the example so I'm going to put anything here. So the total here is 2,000, and that's 8,000. So RR, R, R is 100 over 2,000, 80 over 8,000. So it's five. So the relative risk and um, this um, exposure is five. The next. Oh, okay. So now you have to take the natural log of um, L and R R is um, L and five. I don't know if. Oh, yes, okay, so I actually made the. Right, so if you take the natural log of 5, then it'll become this. Um, now you can calculate the uh, standard error of the natural log of rr so you just plug in those numbers into the equation to have this as standard error and then you can calculate the um, 95 percent confidence interval in the log space and Nice. So these two numbers are the uh, lower limit and upper limit of 95% confidence interval uh, for the um, logged, um, the, the RR in natural log. Now you have to do the exponentiation 
Right, if you do that, then you get this as a lower limit, and this as upper limit in the original scale, and the 5 should be located somewhere in the middle of this interval, and it does. So we know that um, our calculation is more or less correct. So um, the way to interpret the result is exactly the same as how you interpret the odds ratio. So you state the conclusion in the original scale, the relative risk for the disease for the exposure. Um, compared to the non-exposure, so 5.0, indicating the increase in risk of the disease for the people who are exposed. So the 95% confidence interval of the RR, 3.74, 6.68, indicates that a risk of having the disease is significantly higher for the exposed group compared to the group without the exposure because the confidence interval does not contain 1.0. But that is exactly the same as um, odds ratio, right? So if you have a risk ratio close to 1, then there is no relationship or association between the exposure and the disease. And if the 95% uh, confidence interval for the um, RR does not include 1, then we can conclude that there is a statistical significant association between the exposure and the disease. Um, so if both limits of uh, the 95% confidence interval are greater than 1, then the effect of the exposure is harmful. Whereas, um, you know, if the both limits are less than 1, then the effect of the exposure is beneficial, which is exactly the same as the um, odds ratio. So another major difference between the case control study and the core study design is in their calculation of association between the exposure and disease. We previously learned that we calculate the RR for core study design or clinical trials, whereas we calculate the OR for the um, case control study, even though we are using the same 2x2 two two contingency table and four numbers from the table to calculate them. The difference seems subtle and looks similar enough um, if we just then um, look at the actual, so that's AD or BC, but it's A times A plus B, no, sorry, A over uh, A plus B and C over C plus D, right? So it seems like the difference is not that much, but you know, this is quite, um, this has quite important implication. So um, this difference in calculating the association stems from the differences in how study population is ascertained in each study design. So most of the time, a core study starts with the known number of large cohort and this cohort is assigned to so the members of the cohort is assigned to either exposure or no exposure group and the incidence proportion or risk can be determined for each group because we know the total in each group on the other hand in case control studies rr the risk ratio cannot be calculated because we cannot calculate risk in each group because only the fraction of controls are selected. So an incidence proportion cannot be calculated because we don't know the actual size of the original population from which the cases are um, arising. However, odds ratio is an indirect estimate of the strength of association between outcome um, and whether or not the patients were exposed. So that is actually uh, possible based on this rare disease assumption. Um, so when uh, the, the disease under investigation is rare, then odds ratio approaches the um, relative risk, assuming that 
the prevalence of the disease of interest is rare, and there is a fairly large number of exposed individuals in the population, but most of them are not diseased. And the, another assumption is that the proportion of exposed individuals among the cases um, is greater than the proportion of exposure among uh, the controls. So to further illustrate this uh, difference, let's assume a hypothetical source population of a town. Here, the people with a specific disease are in red, um, and the non-diseased individuals are blue. Um, healthy but exposed individuals are indicated by kind of a, kind of a glowing whitish uh, midsection. So note that the exposed individuals um, can be diseased or healthy, and the disease does not seem common in this population, given the number of red. So let's suppose that we somehow had exposure and outcome information of all the individuals in this population, and our contingency table looks like this. Now that we have a total number of exposed and not exposed groups, uh, we can calculate the incidence proportion or risk of the disease for the exposed and not exposed groups. First, then what is the risk to develop the disease in the exposed group? And that is 7 over 1007, so it's about 0.7%. Now, what is then risk for the unexposed? It's a 6 over uh, 5,640, which is about 0.11%. So now the RR is just the ratio of these two numbers. So if we divide the risk for the exposed group by the risk for the not exposed, then we have um, 6.52, suggesting that individuals with exposure to the risk factor um, have 6.5 times the risk of getting the disease compared to those who are not exposed to the risk factor, which implies very strong association. Now, imagine that you want to run a much smaller cohort study as you do, as you do not have enough budget. So you will just take a random sample of, say, 5 to 10% from this population and use the sample as your study cohort. So here the trouble is um, that, you know, given how rare the disease is, the chances are that we end up with a sample without a single case included. But if we are to run a case control study, we usually have a most of or all the data, all the cases, um, because that's where we start, right? So now, instead of enrolling all the people in the population, suppose that we just take a small sample of the non diseased population, say just a percent, then we might end up with this kind of table. With this, I cannot um, calculate the incidence because I don't know the actual size of the population. Right? The total is not known. So this is usually what happens in the case control study where you cannot determine the true incidence. However, you can still estimate the strength of association between the exposure by computing the odds ratio. So um, the RR, the risk ratio from the cohort study was 6.52. And let's just calculate the odds ratio. So odds of having disease and exposed, 7 over 10.7, and the odds of having disease in the not exposed group is 6 over 56, uh, it's uh, 0 0.1, um, so if you take the odds ratio to 6.53, which is very close. So in clinical studies, um, the parameter of greater interest is often the RR rather than the OR, but um, RR can be approximated by the OR if the disease is rare. And when the rare disease assumption does not hold, 
then the um, odds ratio um, tends to overestimate uh, relative risk. Again, here are some good things and bad things about the uh, prospective cohort study. Um, so the good thing about the um, prospective cohort study is that ex exposure uh, is measured before disease onset. So the design um, is more clearly indicating the temporal sequence, so temporality between exposure and the outcome. Uh, because in a core study, subjects are known to be disease-free at the beginning of the observation when their exposure status is established. While a core study design can be used to investigate common exposures, they are particularly useful for evaluating the effects of rare or unusual exposures because the study starts with an adequate number of subjects who have unusual exposures. Um, a core study also enables um, examination of multiple outcomes of a single risk factor. For example, if a core study can be conducted to study multiple outcomes of a nuclear radiation exposure, such as uh, skin disease, liver malfunction, or other types of cancers. Um, finally, you can calculate the true incidence of a disease in the exposed and unexposed groups. On the other hand, um, the cohort study design may cost you a fortune and very time consuming because you have to follow a large number of subjects for a long period of time, typically. And because it runs over a long period of time, some of the subjects in the exposed group might have additional exposure during the study period or diagnostic criteria can change um, because of the new information obtained from the study or somewhere else. In addition, um, the study starts with knowledge of exposure in, in advance, so the investigator might not be very objective in deciding the outcome to follow. Finally, a cohort study is very vulnerable to loss to follow-up, so every effort should be invested to minimize the loss to follow-up.